It's about time for an update here. We've uh, we've had to move a bit because uh, our welcome wore out at King Super. So now we're down the road a bit of a Target. It's actually recommended by an Arvada cop. It's a place where you know people tend to camp out once in a while. But I was also told that technically no, because <laughs> they got signs up here saying no camping overnight parking. But there's also uh, no towing company attached to the lot, so I think they'd have to go through a couple of hoops to get us moved. But either way, um, there's there's a PT Cruiser parked over there that's been there longer than we are. So I think as long as we don't make a nuisance of ourselves and we stay behind this tree, we should be fine. All right, uh, developments in the Discovery thing. Now they're saying... Yeah, you know, apparently damage control mode. No, no, no. It wasn't legal requirement. No, don't be silly. We can legally use any design we want. It was creative choices. Right. Yeah. Uh, me, th me thinks the company doth protest too much. And why would John Ease and the, and the other guy, I forget the name, you know, make this up? They're not the type, okay? And John is still, you know, despite having kind of collaborated with the enemy and going with the JJ Trek and all this, he's still pretty widely regarded and, and, and not known as a dishonest guy. And why would he make this up? They were told you got to change it at least 25%. That's a copyright infringement defense there. It has to be at least 25% different than the stuff you're copying. So... Again, if they're legally up, allowed to use, they could have, like I said, they could have waltzed on to uh, Vic Mignona sets in Georgia or Kali sets up in Ticonderoga and just filmed it as is. They're, they're, they're lit and everything, ready, you know, filming, and could have done it right there, but they chose not to or built or rebuild their own. They had to, they were told to change it at least 25%. And as. Future overlord Victor Van Doomcock said, uh, 25% different from a thing makes it not the same thing. So no, that is not the Enterprise. Not the Prime, not the Prime Universe Unifies. It is not the Prime Universe. And so forth. The only thing they've really done good is they've they've got a good cast. I've not really any problems with any of the casting decisions on this thing. The writing has been amateurish, hackish, and idiotic on, on several levels. Character motivations have been, I mean, the most hackneyed bunch of crap. The level of intelligence, or lack thereof, on the various characters has been a, a, nothing short of astonishing. You can tell, I don't. these guys, I don't think they've even so much as seen a G.I. Joe cartoon as far as military experience goes. The stuff they have these guys doing, I think it's great military strategy. It's crap. And I think it definitely shows because, like the original series, you had veterans all over the place. Not only in you know, in the producer and writer set, but even some of the cast. I mean, Jimmy Doohan you know, was on was in D Day. He forgot he was shot so times. He was shot by a fellow Canadian, which was you know, case of friendly fire, but. That cigarette case, you know, kept him from being killed. So it's like, like he like says, first mm. the only case of where or being a smoker saved his life. And one of the uh, that's why he's missing a finger too. Yeah, exactly. Because they gave him a choice, you know. Yeah, it's either lose the finger or be stuck flipping off the worst of the world with his right with his right hand. So like, okay, well, lose the finger. But that's another tangent. All right. But yeah, they're doing stuff that the old shows like that doesn't work. Just instinctively, right off the bat, that doesn't work. That, that no one would do that. I mean, going back to the second, you know, the, the the original thing. You have a battle. You don't leave your biggest ship on the field with survivors. Just leave it there, you know. The, you know, for anybody to come along and pillage and whatever. By the same token, the Shinzo sitting there. Why did they, as it was happening, why are they abandoning ship? And the only reason they have is because they've got to be gone for when the Klingons come on six months later. Because, yeah, they're going to let it sit there for six months with a working warp core, warp core and computer system. And, and the only thing I think that happened on the ship was they turned the lights off and the heat off. It's, you know, it had air, it had power. Had a working warp core? F 
fire the thing up and take the back and you've just handed the war to the Klingons in a silver platter because you, because with the computer comes all the intelligence that's in there and all the you know everything about Starfleet you want to know. So yeah, the fact that the Klingons would sit there for six months and not see a valuable intelligence you know asset sitting right off their port bow. And it takes somebody else coming in and pointing this out. And it's like, like I said, Starfleet are idiots, Klingons are idiots, they're not even Klingons, Kling orcs. I like that, you know, yeah. That is one thing we can all thank Dictor Van Doomcock for is coining some phrases. Kling orcs, Mikey Spock, you know. But yeah, check out his latest. I'll put a link to that down below his latest video. Because he pretty much lays it out that no, it is not Prime Universe. It's never been Prime Universe. They've been lying the whole time. And they're hung out to dry on their own words and actions. So I think we can now safely dispense with this whole whole pretense of, you know, this is all a big what if. And it's more than just a change of, you know, what if Spock had a sister? Well, also, what if one of the Starfleet designers saw Star Wars a few too many times and really went nuts with a hologram projectors? And yeah, you got holograms, but they're lousy holograms. I mean, because you got the staticky screen, you know. It's got, it's a, this is this is not Star Trek hologram technology as we've seen. It's Star Wars te hologram technology. You know? Don't they? The only thing missing is someone changing the channel and then Admiral in the first episode and up comes Princess Leia. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Okay. I think, you know, again, these guys, I would like to quiz these. How much Star Trek have you actually watched? And I keep bringing this only. It goes back to when Ron Moore, when they were getting ready to gear up Enterprise. And they're asking Ron more about his experience and getting said they need to become true, true blue born again believers in the original series or it's gonna die. Mm. And they they tried to as much as they could with you know deal with some network interference here and there, and they also had a hundred years of you know lead up time. So by the fourth season they were really they were starting to hit their stride. They were getting it right, and you also had a hardcore showrunner in uh, Manny Cotto, and they were starting to really embrace their role as a prequel. And not just another show that happened to be in the Star Trek universe. They were setting things up. And I think one more year and you, you would have seen some spectacular stuff. Mm. One, they would have refit the, refit the Enterprise with that secondary hull. We got the lineage more lined up there. And I think you would have seen the beginnings of the, of the Romulan War. We already saw some hints of it there, but I think it really would have gotten intense there. Oh, and one little bit of useless trivia. We also would not have gotten These Are the Voyages. That's some big uh, right the, there. The, you guys might like... Um, the guy playing the Admiral, um, he's from a Saturday morning show on CBS yeah, called, called The, the Inspectors. Yeah, inspector, about postal inspectors. And I think he's doing a pretty good job with this one. He was in one episode and he died. Well, actually, he showed up in the beginning of the second episode. It's a two-part episode. Yeah. It's a two-part story and he died. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, anyway. So, he did pretty good. Moving along... Kiss my butt. But yeah, it's like, no. Any pretense that this is prime timeline has been blown out of the water by their own words and actions. So, and again, just the Enterprise by itself. They're still trying. Well, it was a ten-year gap. Uh, no, there isn't really. They're really down to like maybe a six or seven-year gap. And plus, they admitted. And one of the other guys, admitted, you know, they they did expand the size of the ship by a considerable amount to try and make it look better next to the Discovery. And also major structural changes. And so you get the thing. There is, one, why would you change it so radically and then change it right back to what it was a couple of years later? That's well, just stupid on the face of it right there. Well, but also, it's like there is no way in this or any universe you're going to explain away a refit that takes a 947 foot ship expands it out to about 
1,500 to 2,000 feet, and then back to 947 feet a couple years later with the exact same configuration as before. Doesn't work. I mean, well, one good not thing even I fantasy novels would do that kind of idiocy, okay? Yeah, one good thing I remember, though. Hmm. At least the Enterprise on um, Discovery, you know, didn't have those weird-looking cells that looked like a pair of silicone boobs with uh, nipples. But they still were not the ones from the second, first or second pilot. Even so. That's the touchstone right there. They're a few years out from the cage and maybe another eight or so years ago from when Oma has gone before. <sighs> Compare those two ships. Same, well, it's the same damn model, obviously, but there's very, very few changes. You got, you're got you changing the detail on the end caps and a few markings and adding a few lights. That's all they did between pilots. You know, the really big, you know, changes didn't come with, they started with production. And even then, it's just, you know, adding adding more lights and changing the coast. And actually, I think a lot of it was good. Why look? Why the ship is actually darker in the production thing? Because of all the, the lights on it, and they had to drop the light down. Because I think the color of the of the ship itself, I think, it was pretty much the same all the way through. It's just the pilots; it was much more brightly lit, so it looked white. Yeah. Kind of like James Rain is Sarah. It was an improvement over Ben Cross, but uh, yeah, Ben Cross. The, the stuff just... they've given him to do, and the, and plus, Sarah never had that haircut. Okay. This is more of kind of a Caesar cut, really, you know, but we didn't have the bowl cut. Like everybody knew. That's another thing I'm really irritated at. When they suddenly, they, every Vulcan has a bowl cut, even the even the even the women. That was never the case on the Even Michael series. Burnham when she was a kid. It's stupid. It's yeah. a it's a typical haircut, but it wasn't exactly universal. Look at Tapring and Paul. Did they, they have no? They didn't have that hair. No, they didn't. Even fairly elaborate hairdos for the females. You but we're getting off on we're, we're we're going off on a tangent here. So uh So yeah. We I think we can finally dispense with you know I I think this is gonna be another case of that just about does it for Void for Discovery. There is no way in hell they can say with a straight face it's the prime universe, okay? It may be their prime universe for you know everything they're gonna be doing, but it's not the prime universe. Yeah. Yeah. Put them on a lie detector yeah. and that thing would be going off. Yeah. So it's that. So again, little advice to Les Moonves. So when one of your real internet uh, monitor guys, you know, brings us to your attention, fire these people immediately. You still got a year go out for production. They're not going to hold anything up. Fire them. Get rid of every last one. And it's like keep Rod around for street cred. Other than that, everywhere the ones, uh, the twelve other executive producers, get rid of them. They are useless. They're idiots. And you. You can do a quick poll on a Trek bulletin board somewhere and who would who would be a good producer for the next Star Trek show? You'll get a pretty good list of names from people who are experienced and know what they're doing. Ron Moore? Ron D. Moore. Brandon Braga. I, yes, I'm even saying the... I once called this man the Antichrist at one point. I got quoted in Details Magazine. But yeah, I'm, I'm saying Brandon Braga. Even though he's probably tied up with Orville right now. But uh, Ron might have some time on his hands. And Ira Stephen Bear and a few... You know, Renee Javeri, a few others, you know, Robert Hewitt Wolf, you know. Oh, for that matter, uh, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Seth is definitely tied up with Orville. I know, but still. In fact, I th you'd do far better <laughs> to just shell out some money to Fox and, you know, tag along with that and make it Star Trek Orville. <laughs> you'd win over a lot of fan base on that one, just eat a little crow for a while. But as far as salvaging Discovery, nothing short of a complete and total in-universe reboot. Mm. Or something happens, like somebody figures out something went wrong with the timeline somewhere, and we got to go back and fix it, or all the universe is doomed. Nick yeah. Meyer. And Nick Meyer, maybe. But he's a consulting producer anyway. But again, mm. Nick was never that big a Star Trek thing, so he's got some ideas. But, you know, Rathacon has not aged well. And like I said, he took the nauticals and he... He, by his own word, piled it on with a trowel. The whole thing with the torpedo room. It's like, wheeling out the guns. It's like, okay, that's a little too much, Nick. I'm going to back it off. You know, stuff was done automatically back in the day. Yeah. But yeah, they got to get rid of him. The art director, no. Herman Zimmerman, Doug Drexler, bring them in. 
Let me straighten this shit out immediately. Yeah. Even though Nick Meyer and, made a TV movie that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. All right, I it's and enough for the well. tangents. We only got so much time. Yeah, right yeah. yeah, we're already bite me. We're already uh, fifteen minutes here, so. So, okay. But they've got you know if they want to salvage this thing and not have it be you know, a two short season wonder of what you know why did nobody watch because it was an idiotic show written by morons, you know, who seem to think the audience won't buy anything that happens and unfortunately there's a sizable chunk that will buy anything with a Star Trek label on it just because they're there, it's Star Trek. Mm, it used to be a much more discerning bunch. God, even Taylor Hackford would be better on you know on Star Trek than any of these guys. Mm -hmm. It's like saying Steven Spielberg would be better. Well, it's about the size. Ed Wood would be a better choice director-wise, okay? <laughs> or, uh, uh, crap. What's his name from, uh, The Disaster Artist? Tommy Wiseau? Yeah. Let's not get too crazy. Okay. Well, he'd be better. He'd be a better choice than most of these assholes. I mean... No, I want the... Oh, hi, Spock! <laughs> The only thing I got yeah. to say to the rest of these producers mm. is, yeah, stick to Hawaii Five-0. No, yeah, Kurtzman, stick to yeah, stick to cop shows, okay. And Guys. don't piss off the veterans. Yeah, and, and don't do more, you know, location shoots in, in grave in military graveyards. Okay. But no, these these guys have got to go, okay. Because they are they are quite literally threatening the future of the franchise if they if they persist in this nonsense. Because nothing, nothing, you, the credibility of CBS is, is on the line here now. Because this is what they think that when they have free reign to do whatever they want to do, and this is what they come up with. Actually, and especially with the thing where they, they rejected the Orville. This is not a good thing. When the, the show you rejected has become Fox's biggest Thursday night hit. And actually, now that I think of it, um, you know, that's not speaking well of your judgment there, Les, okay? Uh, yeah, the yeah. big boss on Hawaii Five O would be good, too. Because he's had some genre experience. What's he done? Demolition Man. Lenkov? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I think that was his first foot in the U.S. market. Well, let's wrap this up here, okay? So... PayPal, Patreon down below, and also I'm going to link into a uh, Facebook fundraiser I got going, because by the third, yes, we will get that car one way or the other, but it would be nice if we have enough for gas and insurance and tags and food, because so it, it's going to take a serious bite just to get this car, and the sooner we can get out of here, the better, you know. As it is, our kid and, sister in Florida is yeah, it's got, got a, the other store. Yeah, she'll be able to throw money in for that. But but also, and before, you you know, in constant bank, it got a pretty good line on a, on a good job down there. Working at a call center that actually, was a call center I can probably work with. They're not going to not be having these, you know, sales quotas or whatever. Just like you just answering the phones. Bring a book. You know, when they say bring a book, that's a very good sign. <laughs> and not a Kindle book. Any Yeah, actual book. Yeah. Which actually gave me time to probably work on the concordance. So, anyway, yeah. So, yes. One way or another, our long natural nightmare is drawing to a close. It's a question, the only question of what we'll have to move again in the meantime. Hopefully not. I think we're in a good spot here. and they, We're kind of behind some plants here, so we're not directly visible. they got to really look. And again, the PT Cruise has been here longer than we are, so they're not being that diligent about overnight parking. But yeah, we, we we will be getting that. You know, barring some other disaster, we will be getting that car on the third, and at least we'll be finding a moving target for a while. But hopefully, enough of you guys can come through, and others can come through, that we can actually pack up, blow it out, and get the hell out of Colorado. Okay. And give a get nice on to, big get on to, get on to, get on to sunny Florida and restart. Yeah, yeah we will and be guess, stopping to see a friend of ours on the way. Yeah, we're planning on if he's in town because right now. Yeah, I know it's right now. Our friends, Dick, Dick Ward, and Kevin and Kevin Dillmore, 
are across town at Starfest. We can't get over there now. Apparently Dayton saw Mile High, the Mile High Comics Megastore for the first time. Mm. He's thinking about moving out here now. <laughs> oh, boy. But great, Dayton. I just worked right out, but I'm leaving. That is one thing I'm going to miss, the Megastore. That, that was... Because that's one thing. If you've never been, if you've never been to the Mile High Comics Megastore, it is a comic convention on site. <laughs> mm. Like check out, you know, Kevin Smith did a video when he visited. He was blown away. Mm. And it's kind of fun seeing people around the country react to Mile High Comics. Because me, it was just it was Mile High Comics is local. It's like, you know, guys down the you know down yeah. store down in Colfax and a few other places. But they, they were yeah. going, oh, I remember reading these ads as a kid. Wonder what it's like. And wow, it's like yeah, this wasn't always here. This was very recent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I when I saw the first Virgin Mega Store out here, which ended up getting closed. Thank well, you yeah. much. Well, that happens. No. no. But they. But then I went to New York and saw the one in Times Square. You didn't. You oh you'd... my fucking god! You're gonna have to see the one in London. How many floors? Uh, at least three. It's very, very large. The one in uh, New York City has three floors, and it's pretty big. Oh, this one, it's, it's big. It's big, 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 big. This is big for even, you know, even Times Square. We're talking London, okay? Home base for Virgin Records and Virgin, Virgin everything, okay? Mm -hmm. I remind you, Sir Richard Branson is English, okay? So, yeah, the yeah I'm pretty sure the Virgin Megastore in London is a hell of a lot bigger than the one in, London, in New York, okay? You know, I remember reading a story about, um... I forget how many hundreds of pounds I spent on that store. <laughs> Kate Winslet rescuing, I think it was his mother, from from a fire on uh, Necker Island. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> As we wander off into the weeds again. Uh, All right. PayPal, Patreon, down below, and fundraiser and other stuff. And I'll also throw some links into the, uh, the Doomcock video. Because he pretty much sums it up very well. It's like... Time to write off Discovery as anything resembling other than you know, just an Elseworlds, you know, what if story. It's alternate timeline. They've they've as much as admitted it. So, time to cut them loose, guys. Catch you later.